I'm back in my home country to explore one of Italy's best kept secrets. This is stunning Adriatic coast. I'm on a 700 mile journey discovering the breathtaking landscapes and culinary delights. Look at that. Mm, wonderful. Of the magnificent east coast of Italy. Tranquil and unspoiled, there is so much to explore. From Venice in the north, down to the very end of the Adriatic coast. It's just awesome, awesome. The next stage of my journey along the coastline brings me to the Itria Valley, which for me is the food heart of the Adriatic. An agricultural region, it's celebrated for incredible ingredients and must-do food experiences. This is a place where you can enjoy a different kind of holiday. This is food lovers' paradise. The area is littered with ancient farmhouses called Masseria. Once the center of vast farm estates, many still grow traditional local produce. This one is run by Giuliano and his family. They've turned their 14th century farm into a hotel. So what is it, a masseria? A masseria in Puglia, it's a word that we use to refer to a farmhouse. Okay. So it's like an agriturismo? Yes. yes. So people exactly. can come here, yeah. You know, sleep in your rooms and exactly. enjoy, yes. it, you know, all the local produce, yeah. everything you got on the land. It's, it is an experience where we uh, put people in touch with the nature. I love to come to um, places like this because you know that you're going to get the best food, you're going to get food that is in season. Yes. You really cannot go wrong. And yes. some of the masses here is even cheaper than a, a normal hotel. So why would you not want to be here and get the best experience ever. Yes, yes. Crazy. In fact, in fact Crazy. this is more real. This is figs time. Which yes. One? Uh, oh, pick a good one, yeah? Yes, I will. So okay. see this? If you open so, it up, technically this is called a fiorone. It comes uh, earlier than the normal figs. Mm. Texture is nice. Figs. Yes, yes, yes. Masseria were built as peasant farms in the Middle Ages. Many were then taken over by wealthy landowners in the 16th century. Most then fell into disrepair, but locals like Giuliano have bought them and restored them. Look in your Masseria from here. Yes. Everything is very pristine, beautiful. It's always been like this? Uh, no, no. When my family bought it, uh, uh, this place uh, was abandoned for about 50 years, okay. so it was a ruin. So it took about 10 years to renovate it and, uh, and bring it back to life. This region is Italy's biggest producer of olive oil. The older the tree, the sweeter the olives. So like wine, extra virgin olive oils can taste very different. Giuliano and his wife Alessandra have more than 2,000 trees. So what's the difference? OK, so we uh, made a distinction okay. according to the age of the trees. This is from trees that yes. uh, have more than a thousand years. Have you got trees that are over a thousand years yes, old? Yes, they can be one thousand, two thousand. Pre-Christ as well? Yes, definitely, oh, wow. yeah. Which one we should try first? We try with the in mille first, which okay. means thousand. I'm here to have a shot with you. La Chaim. Yeah, we do. Like I am. Like I am. <laughs> Italian people tend to do this suction thing, so then uh, it kind of goes all over the palates. Yes. Beautiful flavor, really powerful. Okay. Sick. Not too peppery, which no. is good, no, we and it goes away. Should we have another Violent. shot? Yes. Yeah. This is okay. more than 100 years. Like I am. It's already hitching a little bit. Wow. Yeah. The first one was slightly bitter. This is slightly yes. milder. This is my opinion. Yes. Is your yes. opinion? Yeah. This is from our youngest trees, 25, 30 years. 
Diego. Yes. Not as strong as the other two. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, okay. To friendship? Yes. Yeah. To family? Yeah. And to the olive tree? The older oils are sweet and strong and make good salad dressing. The younger, more bitter oil is better for cooking. So I'm using this to make a classic pasta dish for Giuliano and his family. This dish requires five ingredients. Spaghetti, it requires a good extra virgin olive oil, garlic, then you want chili, and a little bit of parsley. Simple as that. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is parsley, flat leaf parsley, quite a lot. Uh, rule number one, make sure that your saucepan at this stage is absolutely cold. Okay, happy with the parsley? So I got my garlic, four or five cloves of garlic. It has to be quite garlicky. So peel the garlic and start to roughly chop and then we're gonna finally chop it. Now, put the parsley above the garlic and chop everything together. And whatever you do, there is no way that you're gonna blitz this one into an electric blitz because it's just not gonna work, yeah? It's gonna get all dark and, you know, gooey, sticky together. You want to do this one by hand, just the way I'm doing it. Olive oil goes in a pan, like that. Then straight in goes the garlic and the parsley. And then you're just gonna put the chili. I'm using the chili flakes, which they're gonna go in and just a fresh chili. I'm gonna use half of it. A medium hot red chili will definitely do the job. Chili goes in, and only now is when you're gonna switch on the heat under your frying pan. As soon as you see the garlic and the chili that is start to sizzle, switch off straight away, your sauce is done. You know, you can make this one a little bit more sexy if you want. You can throw a few prawns in there, fresh cherry tomato, just cut them in a half and throw them in. If you learn the basic of spaghetti, aioli and peperoncino, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Okay, so this is perfect. So now I'm gonna go for the pasta. When you cook pasta, make sure that the water is boiling. In there, I'm going to add a handful of salt. There is nothing worse when people cook pasta in water where there is no salt. Spaghetti is traditional for this recipe, but linguine or tagliatelle also work well. Nearly there. Now, this needs another 30 seconds, so this is the moment now to put a little bit more heat under the oil, the garlic, and the chili. Okay, this is ready, so the pasta straight into the sauce. And see this little bit of water that it comes from the pasta? That is gonna make the sauce even better. Straight in. Look how the garlic, the parsley, the chili beautifully coats each strands of the spaghetti. Oh, yes. I wouldn't add any salt because remember we salted the water when we cooked the pasta. From here straight into the serving dish. I mean, if I have to have my last plate of pasta ever, I can tell you right now, this is the one I would. Fantastico. Ragazzi pronti? Ah, Aglio, olio e peperoncino. Bellissimo. Oh. Ah, no, le, le facciamo la... Sì, no, 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 uh, don't start, eh? The lady first. <laughs> Signora, mangiate, mangiate. Buon appetito. Grazie. Marcello wants a pasta? Yes. You want some pasta? You want some pasta? When you get older, what you need to do, you need to get a boyfriend who can cook, okay? So then you don't have to do any cooking. Why would... Qua non si vede niente. The Itra Valley is dotted with whitewashed towns. And my next stop is Cisternino, 10 miles south of Giuliano's Masseria. 
Its Renaissance architecture makes it one of the prettiest towns in the area, but it's really famous for an unmissable culinary experience. There is nothing better to go to your local butcher when you choose your fresh meat. But let me tell you something, in this town, they go in a step even further. Buongiorno. Hola, buongiorno. And so, come stai, bello? Tutto bene? Started in the 30s, this family butchers is run by Pietro and his son Enzo. 20 years ago, they became the first barbecuing butchers of Cisternino. What they do in here is something unique. Because of the supermarket and the competition, they kind of reinventing themselves. So you can come here, choose the meat that you want, they will cook it behind there, sit at the table, and eat it straight away. That, to me, is just magical. This place is renowned for a particular local speciality. It's nothing more than a piece of meat, which can be veal, pork, beef. They bash it down very thinly, then they roll it, and then they put spices like chili, rosemary, then they put breadcrumb around. They call it bombette, which, uh, if you want to translate, it means like a little bomb, because it looks like something that is going to explode. Me ne faccio, me ne vuoi fare uno di tutto? Un po' di tutto. Sì, I really don't know what to choose, so I ask my friend Enzo, to do one skewer with a mix of everything, because I want to try everything. Enzo and his father were the first, but other local butchers have followed their lead. And now Cisternino draws visitors from all over Italy. Gino, ci siamo. Ah, siamo pronti, mamma mia. Allora. Perché non sono piccanti, alla fine mangiamo il piccante. Quelli piccanti, ok. So Enzo just suggested to have the one that they're not too spicy. Leave those at the end, otherwise you're going to ruin your palate. Wow. God, the meat is so tender. Tell you what, if you come to Cisternino and you don't try the bombette, you are absolutely crazy. This is delicious. Salute. Grazie, eh? Grazie. Cisternino is a classic example of many white towns in this region. But 10 miles south is the most striking of them all, the glittering walled city of Ostuni. It's known as the White City, and it's a spectacular sight as it rises from the olive groves. The town's unique architecture has been influenced by many different civilizations, from the ancient Greeks to the Spanish. But it's the fact that every building here is painted white with limestone that makes Ostuni so special. You were expecting me to be on a scooter? Look at that, this is much cooler. Segways are the newest way to explore the city's steep slopes in the heat of the summer. This place is full of little streets, back passageways, bridge, arches. Let me tell you something, this is the best way to spend the day. This is the highest point of the city, the Cathedral of Santa Maria dell'Assunzione, and is a fine example of Gothic architecture. As the city is perched almost 700 feet above the olive groves, I can see the Adriatic Sea glistening four miles away. The lime is such a symbol of Ostuni that by law, each building must be repainted every spring. Now in their late 60s, brothers Benedetto and Beniamino were born and bred here. They have been painting their city for more than 60 years. Buongiorno. 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 Buongiorno, signor Gino. Buongiorno. Tutto bene? Bene, grazie. Benedetto? Io mi sono Benedetto. Benjamino, come va? Benjamin. Tutto a posto? Benissimo. Ah, the reason why I'm here because I volunteered that I'm going to paint, well, not the whole city, but part of the wall with them. Grazie. Quando è... Eh, ma io non ho il cappello, no, non tengo oh, niente. Oh, Gino, ecco. Ah, ok, because I don't want my hair to get messy. Questo è il cappello tipico dell'imbianchino, Gino. Okay. 
Beniamino, prego, so, prego, 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 prego il maestro il maestro metti il grembiule, grembiule che grembiule, si sì. usava nei secoli scorsi che serviva per non sporcarsi i pantaloni okay. pantaloni ok so I go my uh, handmade hats this is the traditional apron that they used to use in the old days so you don't get your uh, trousers dirty okay. so the reason why they use in limestone paint is mainly for two reasons number one because the white color reflects the light and the most important thing is because they use it as a disinfectant so in the old days if there was a spread of a disease the the limestone would make sure that it was much more controlled and it was the lime's natural disinfectant qualities that saved ostuni from being wiped out by the plague vado dai sì dai gino so la tecnica dovrebbe essere ma com'è che non si usa il rullo no no so this is the traditional way and the way to do it they explain you put it in there then you put it bravo, upside Gio. down okay okay bravo Gino bravo bravo, bravo. Piano, piano 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 slowly slowly piano piano, piano Gio. you make sure that you go in all the cavity of the wall così I'm wondering when I'm gonna have a tea break I'm right, tired already it's hot right, in here right. bravo Gino bravo ti assumiamo subito Gino eh He wants to employ me to do this. I mean, as much as I want to really help them, I don't think this is for me. I'm going to stick with cooking. While Beniamino and Benedetto finish the tower, I'm going to prepare the king of all Italian desserts, the coffee and cream classic tiramisu. Now, this is a recipe that has been given to me by my grandfather, okay? And let me tell you, every time I do it, it never fails. First thing, need to get a dish like this, because to make a good tiramisu, you need to make a big batch. Don't do it in the little fancy glasses. Make a big one, so then all the flavors develops together. It all starts with eggs. So get yourself two bowls, and we want five eggs. Now, the way to separate, there are two ways. There is the way where I guarantee you, you're gonna make a mistake, i.e. when you start to juggle the egg yolk and the egg white in two shells. I guarantee you one of the egg yolk is going to break. Or there is my way where you're going to have to use the little finger. So you just pick up the eggs, the egg yolk, and you just run it very gently through your finger like that. And that's how you get your perfect egg yolk. So add six tablespoons of caster sugar into the egg yolk. Beat the whites until they form soft peaks. Okay, this is definitely done. Then whisk the yolks and sugar together. See how it's changed the color. Look at that. Now it's going into a pale color. It's tend to be bright yellow. What it means that the sugar is completely dissolved into the egg yolk, so you don't have the gritty sugar into your teeth. Okay, now. For a good tiramisu, you're gonna have to use mascarpone cheese, which you can find anywhere. So you just pick it up gently with a flexible spatula, just fold the mascarpone into the egg yolk. I'm going to use whipped double cream. You pick it up and you put it in there. Do a couple of spoons at a time and then start to fold in. My next ingredient is amaretto liqueur. It comes from almonds, it gives a fantastic flavor. So what you want is six tablespoons of amaretto liqueur straight in. Now you probably start to think now that the cream mixture looks a bit runny. Don't panic because when it goes into the fridge, it will set beautifully. Now we're gonna fold in the egg white. Do three spoonful at a time, okay? Then gently you fold like this, from the bottom to the top, because you don't want to lose any air from the egg whites. Whenever I make a tiramisu, I always make sure that I make myself a good espresso because I like the coffee to be strong. If you don't want the coffee to be too strong, you can use instant coffee, but trust me, it's not the same. But whatever you do, the most important thing is to make sure that the coffee is cold. In there, I'm going to add amaretto liqueur, I think four or five tablespoons will definitely do the job. 
there is only one biscuit to use when you make a tiramisu, and the biscuit is called Savoyardi. Very important whenever you dip the biscuit into the coffee not to over soak it, okay? So look what I'm doing. In, count until two, biscuit out. One and two, the biscuit comes out. And very important, keep the sugar side always on top. In, one and two, out. Good tiramisu should always have two layers of biscuits. See, what you have to do, a perfect layer on the bottom. Now, half of the cream goes straight on top of the biscuits. Like that. Add a second layer of biscuits, then another of cream. You just give it a nice shake, then you cover with clean film into the fridge for a minimum of three hours. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where is the cocoa powder? Why is he not shaking the cocoa powder on top and then put it into the fridge? If I put the cocoa powder now on top of the tiramisu and then it goes into the fridge, the cocoa powder is going to become really bitter. After three hours in the fridge, sprinkle with the cocoa powder some toasted almonds and serve with cherries stewed in sugar. Ragazzi, pronti? Pronti, pronti. Guarda che tiramisu che ho fatto. Guarda là, va. Che meraviglia, guarda me. Allora, piccola, grande. A big portion. A big portion. Now, all of a sudden, he talks English. Big portion, a big portion. Eh, vabbè, big portion. Mamma mia. Vi faccio il vostro bianco, perché sennò dite che... perché il bianco è il bianco di Ostuni. So yours is white. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Grazie. Allora. Mm. Com'è? Eh? È durissimo, Gino. Salute allora a questo progetto. Grazie, Gino.